Hello and welcome to today's DIY session. Today I want to talk to you about gold leaf. I'm going to share with you everything I know and love about applying metal leaf. My favorite being gold, but any color leaf that you choose is applied in the same way. If you're looking for the most brilliant shine possible, leafing is your answer. There's always a time and place for metallic paints as well, but I believe all creatives should try metal leafing and be comfortable enough with the process so that you can add it to your toolbox. I have an entire drawer in my toolbox dedicated to gold leafing supplies so that I can create show stopping finishes like this. Gold leafing is not new. In fact, it is believed to be a process used over 8,000 years ago by the ancient Egyptians. All I need to know is that it exists and how to apply it because the results make me so incredibly happy every single time. I do receive a lot of messages and emails from creators with failed attempts, so I felt that it was important to lay down some basics for you right here. First, there is imitation leaf and real leaf. I use imitation, this is imitation, as it is more affordable, it's slightly thicker. I purchase it most often on Amazon in bulk and Hobby Lobby. Regardless of whatever you choose, it's all applied the same. There is also loose leaf sheets and loose leaf flakes and then leaf on a roll that requires rubbing to release it from the roll. No matter what type of gilling leaf you choose, it all requires an adhesive which comes in a spray or a paste. Spray requires you to protect your surrounding area because of overspray as it's extremely sticky. I only use spray if I have a very large surface that I'm able to spray without worrying about the surface area around it. The benefit of using spray is you can leaf almost immediately. It is tacky within just a minute or two, so it doesn't re require any wait time at all. You apply the leafing sheet and smooth it out with a soft brush or a cloth. It's best to not use your fingers as it causes, um, or it can cause tarnishing to occur. I've personally never seen that, but I think it might happen over time. Paste adhesive, which I use most often, is applied using a brush just to the specific area that you plan to gild. This works great when working with trims and moldings or even stencils. The drawback to using paste is it requires a wait time of approximately 30 minutes before it becomes tacky. This is where most people make their mistake. They don't wait long enough. If you apply the leaf before the adhesive has come to tack, the leafing sheet just sort of melts into a gooey mess. So once it is completely tacky, you apply the leafing sheet and smooth it out with a soft brush or a cloth. Once leafing has been applied, you will likely have excess leaf around the edges of the surface that you are working on. You just continue with your brush or a soft cloth to rub off the excess flakes. I am so often asked why the lines of the leafing squares show. If you are working on a large flat space and you've applied the sheets side by side, you will almost always be left with the typical leafing square lines visible. Many people, like myself, have a love for these lines. It just shows that you've taken the time to leaf your project and you leave them. If this bothers you though you can apply leaf adhesive to those lines directly wait for it to come to tack and apply leafing just over this area this is called layering and it helps to diminish the look of the square edges should you choose leafing on a roll it requires a different method to apply it the benefits of this gilding leaf is there is no mess and no waste you apply your adhesive wait for it to come to tack Place the leafing roll over the adhesive and rub with a toothbrush or a, a hard scrub brush to release the leafing from the plastic backing. There will be no excess to rub off or to smooth out, so there's less mess and less waste. I find this method to be a bit more difficult to apply and I recommend trying loose sheets to start with. As you become comfortable with leafing, you may want to try the roll sheet method as well as it offers so many fabulous options in color and design. Once you have completed your gilding process, it's important to seal your leaf. The imitation gold leaf has a high level of copper in it and it will tarnish over time if you do not protect it from the elements. I recommend sealing all leaf no matter what color or type it is. Metal leaf sealer comes in spray and liquid. The same rule applies for the spray, needing to protect surrounding areas and best, used, best to be used on large surfaces. The liquid sealer is what I most often use and I apply it with a soft brush. It's very thin like water and a little bit goes a long way. One coat is all you need. This gorgeous Bombay is a mix of both gold and copper leaf. 
that I've applied in an abstract way. And I love mixing the earthy, flat finish of the clay mineral paint with the shocking shimmer of the brilliance of the leaf. This finish reminds me of antique carnival glass, and I've had several tell me that it looks like reflections that you would see on the surface of oil. Be sure to check out my website, www.tracysfancy.com, and use the search feature with the words gold leaf for loads of inspiration. I hope you found this both helpful and inspirational and that you're planning your gold leafing adventure in your creative brain right now. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and even leave a comment or a quick hello. I'll be back next week with more DIY inspiration. For those of you that are looking for a deeper dive into home decor and DIY processes, I would love to invite you to join my exclusive online creative group, Curiously Creative, where I show up via live video very often to guide you through every step of updating, upcycling, crafting, and creating the most on-trend home decor and gift-giving ideas. You can find that link right here and in the video description below.